My name is Jana Whiteside. If you want to call me Jana Whitehead, that's fine. You're still talking about me, I guess. Uh, I uh, am just a small town girl with a neuro spicy meatball of a brain. Uh, I am an elder emo, a big Swifty, uh, really into divorce dad rock. Um, I kind of identify as a divorce dad in, in most ways, and my baby niece did say I would make a good dad someday. So uh, you get some Matchbox 20 on, some Goo Goo Dolls, Nickelback. I'm sorry. You people who say that you don't actually like it, you're not fooling anybody. That music consistently slaps and we all love it, okay? Um, so now you know a little bit more about me. Uh, I'm currently, I've had a bit of a career change. I'm obviously a part-time court jester, which is what I'm doing here. Uh, I have also started uh, beer tending. And I am now uh, training, I just got hired and being trained to be a ghost tour guide. Um, and I'm really looking forward to starting off my tour by reassuring them that they have not, in fact, survived their first ghost sighting of the evening. This is just what I look like in winter. <laughs> but I am deeply haunted. Uh, <laughs> I have some ghosts in Germantown, I'm not gonna lie. I passed by my old house. Uh, a lifetime ago, I was a child bride, and I was a CPA public audit manager while I was still masking as a, as a normie. Uh, that's what I call neurotypical folks. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, while I was pouring beer for, for a guy last night, he, he was like, well, why, why, did, why did you leave your, your career? You were a CPA, which, I mean, like, is a valid question, right? Uh, because, like, I was becoming the rich white man that my mom had always wanted me to marry. <laughs> So, questionable decision to leave. Um, you know, and I just had to tell him, I was like, you know, if you've seen the Barbie movie, I was just kind of, it got to the point where I was like, Alan escaping from kingdom. And I was just like, if I have to fake laugh at another man in Vineyard Vines, it's going to break my spirit. <laughs> this might not be the best crowd in Germantown. <laughs> Look, I'm dressed like a, like, like a trash worker. Don't judge my taste in, in clothing. Um, and I'm pretty sure I have some people who saw me yesterday beer tending and I'm in the same outfit. <laughs> I washed it. No. Uh, so, uh, yeah, part of the reason was, you know, just part of the reason me making some changes in my life was because... Uh, I wanted to align more with things I was passionate about, like drinking and ghosts, making people laugh. And part of it is because I finally got correct men mental health diagnoses and uh, realized that corporate America was not the best fit for me. So uh, it took several decades, uh, but I, you're looking at a, at a lovely autistic ADHD lady uh, with a little complex PTSD, sprinkle it in there for a little zest. Uh, no, you're just zany. Uh, so, now that I understand my nervous system a little bit better, I can be kinder to it, I can be on the right medicine, uh, I've usually got earbuds with me if my nervous system, I, I'm sensitive to sound. This is a child's chew toy, because uh, I chew holes in my clothes like a little rat uh, so you know I, I feel like self-knowledge is, is is always a step in the right direction um, and I find it so funny you know people are like well everyone's autistic now um, and then those same people when you're like sexuality is a spectrum they're like 100% straight and I'm like okay well maybe not everybody's a little autistic then. Like, like, there's some misconceptions there it is a lovely color wheel it's not like no tiz to very tizzy. Like, uh, we, we come in all shapes and sizes. I, unfortunately, am a female and hot, so they were like, not her. She doesn't have it. Uh, she, doesn't, she doesn't need support for that. Uh, and it cracks me up because they call us the lost generation of women. Uh, women around my, my age, you know, I'm healthy. 82-year-old woman, and uh, 
and now I'm, I'm in my 30s and we're, we're the lost generation of women. We slipped through the cracks because it presents differently in females than males. Um, and I love that term because one of my special interests is, is dinosaurs uh, and a big fan of Jurassic Park. Um, my ultimate special interest is, is Jeff Goldblum. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, if, if you went into my, my home, I've got my two roommates and best friends with me tonight, um, and they can attest if you went into my home, went into my room, uh, and you replaced everything in there that had Jeff Goldblum on it with a model train, I would have got diagnosed when I was eight. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that right now. But yeah, the lost generation makes me think of like a, like a, like a Isla Nublar Jurassic Park situation where there's just like these big wooden gates and then you push them back and it's just these feral manic pixie dream girls and they're just foraging for brain chemicals in the wild. Uh, their only natural predator, hipster beta males. <laughs> and they set traps. They set a trap, they set a cage down. There's a Phoebe Bridgers vinyl and a single Sour Patch watermelon. And you know it's a trap, but you haven't tasted dopamine for days. You know you're gonna have to listen to his EP. You're gonna have to talk about the Justice League. You're gonna give in to it anyways. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, Dating, uh, with my background and with who I am as a person, uh, is challenging. Um, I found a, a new method that's been working pretty well for me, which is abandon all hope. <laughs> that's been working really well for me. Uh, but seriously, I do have one very special man in my life, um, very dear to me. His name is Adam. He, he, he's my baby girl. Uh, he's also my psychiatrist. Um, <laughs> He gave me permission to use his real name and refer to him as, a, as a, my baby girl on stage uh, because he supports my career like all good psychiatrists should. Uh, I, I did set the ringtone for his office uh, to Angel by Shaggy. Um, we have a very special relationship. He's helped me through a lot over this past year. He worked me in a few months ago and uh, you know, I sat down across from him and and he said, you know, this is outside of our normal, you know, maintenance visits, you know, because, like, he's been keeping me out of the grippy sock vacays. You know, I haven't been forced to do one of those. I've had to go to, like, doggy daycare a little bit. Those are the, those are the outpatient ones. You know, my roommates, my owners, they still take me home at the end of the day, and I get belly rubs and snacks. So, so Adam's doing a great job. I mean, you guys, you've only spent, what, eight minutes with me? He's doing a good job. <laughs> Not a lot to work with. I'm pretty sure I've paid for both of his beach houses. Uh, so I'm sitting across from him, and he's like, this is outside of one of our normal appointments, so what's going on? Are you having a bad side effect? You know, what do you need? And I was like, well, um, you know how it, you said I had a pretty significant trauma background. Well, I think something happened that might have added to it. I did have a parent commit suicide. It's not a big deal. It's fine. Um, not very girl boss lay <laughs> of the whole situation. Do you think that I might need um, some, some medicine and, and some treatment, but I, I have to tell you that I'm already making progress and I'm supposed to share my wins with you, Adam. So I'm gonna share them with you right now, which is that after I got the news, I did go to a karaoke bar to sing Rob Thomas. And as we all know, that is an established step in the Kubler-Ross model of grief. <laughs> so we got Rob Thomas down. Unfortunately, while I was there, someone did get hit outside of the bar uh, and was bleeding out. I'm not sure if they were able to save them. Again, not very girl boss lay. Honestly, a little homophobic in my opinion. Uh, but on the bright side, sharing our wins, uh, while they were getting this man emergency attention and uh, everyone was very concerned, I did not sign up and get on stage to sing a song. <laughs> because we all know, Adam, that there's a very real timeline when I would have taken in all that social information, lights from the ambulance coming through the window, 
have gotten on stage, grabbed a mic, and been like, yeesh. <laughs> anyway, here's Wonderwall. <laughs> Thank y'all, y'all have been great.